Hello my darlings, this feels like quite a formal um, <laughs> setup for today's video but Charlie lit the fire here in the drawing room for the first time today and we were having our very own fireside chat and we decided to do a very very long awaited Q&A and house moving tips video. I feel like I don't need to introduce you this time because my channel is literally just a vlog just now. Yeah. yeah, so everyone already knows that this is Charlie. Yeah. I think the last time we sat down and did a video together like Christmas this, it was like. probably Christmas, yeah. Which is coming up. Coming up. We're probably going to film that in this room. But yeah, we we have now lived in this house for six months. And so we thought it would be a really good time to sit down, have a fireside chat and look back on the past six months. When we moved, I made some notes in this notebook of house moving tips. <laughs> And over on Instagram, on both my Instagram and on our home Instagram, little plug, old house, our home, we've noticed we've been getting a few more questions on like house moving tips lately. So I'm going to whiz through these tips um, and I'm sure Charlie's going to pipe up with his, um, yeah, purge, pipe up with his thoughts. And then we're going to go over to my phone and we're going to answer some other questions that you guys left us on the old house, our home Instagram account. Okay. So, house moving tips, and maybe this is relevant if any of you are moving house, maybe you're moving between rental accommodation. I know so many of my friends are moving house right now, have you found that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's, I think it is the time of year that people move house, mm. pre-Christmas, because no one wants to move near Christmas. Christmas, but I don't know if Covid's also had an impact. I, I feel think... like people are leaving the city. <clears throat> I think it has had an impact on people wanting to leave the city. Yeah. But then, to be fair, we're of the age now where a lot of our friends have lived in London probably a similar time to us, mm -hmm. eight, nine years, and they're also getting to the point where they want to move out to whether it's the countryside or whether it's just a, you know, like Surrey, which is borderline countryside. Yeah. So I think it's a combination of factors. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mad to think we've been here six months. It is. It's we've crazy. done a lot, we, we but have six months. It, what do you think about it? Like, Matt, it feels like you know, it feels like such a long time ago we were in the old house. Living in London feels like years ago, but then so much has happened this year. But mm. anyway, before we get sidetracked, <clears throat> let's go through our top house moving tips. The number one tip, which you will read everywhere and that I saw in every single YouTube video when it comes to moving house tips, because I watched a lot of videos, was number one, have the biggest clear out in the world, purge everything. I actually tricked you guys when we were moving house because as lockdown started, I started doing daily videos and I was posing that I was doing a wardrobe clear out or a makeup clear out when actually I was packing. So clearing out your stuff is a really obvious one, mm. but you don't want to pack stuff and then two months later after you unpack it in your new house, end up sending it to charity. So having a humongous clear out in three phases do a big clear out and then do another clear out and then do another clear out it is literally the best thing you can do i, I did it well i'm quite good at clearing out as i go along mm. to be fair but then in terms of like our joint stuff like the kitchen when you start opening cupboards you're like bloody hell i've not seen this since we moved in mm. some of the utensils and stuff like that so i think we we did a good job of it actually when we moved in there wasn't a lot that I feel like we unpacked and then got rid of. But what I would say is, I know I'm jumping ahead, but then you also get a second opportunity to purge when you move in. Because in a way, when you're unpacking stuff, do you remember we were like, do we actually need this? Mm -hmm. And if not, it was good. It went to your mum, it went to charity shop, went on eBay. Yeah. Um, but you should try to do that. Do I need this when you're putting it in the box? Of course you should. Yeah. Of course you should. But, you know, until you move into that, into your new house, mm -hmm. you're never 100% certain on what's going to fit where. True. Because we did discover the one thing with this house, the big deal was there were furniture pieces that we loved, but as soon as we put them in the rooms here, we were like, they just don't work. Yeah. I guess if the house that you're moving to is a quite a different style to the one you currently live in, then you may not fully realise that actually the chairs that you loved in your London home may not be suitable for your countryside home and vice versa. So yeah, thinking about your new house, but just clear out everything, your makeup, your kitchen utensils, your books, clear out as much as you can. And this is something that you can do in that intermediary stage when you are, like with this house, there were there were a couple of months where we were really, are, are we gonna get it, are we not gonna get it, are we gonna be able to move in a month, or, we, or are we gonna have to wait until lockdown's over? So during that time, we were just clearing out. It's a good, it's like a positive distraction as well. Yeah. 
because during that period there were a few complications weren't there with with uh, because it's such an old house and it's listed mm -hmm. and we were just trying to keep busy weren't we but the important thing to mention when you say clearing out we're not talking about chucking stuff away are we on the whole know. we're trying to give something new lease not lease of life give something new life rehome kitchen utensils exactly rehome furniture exactly so my next tip was when you are speaking of clothes, moving your clothes. My next tip when it comes to actually moving your clothes is to keep them on the hangers. So it's really tempting, like you're so used to doing when you're packing for holiday, to take them off the hanger, fold them, put them in a suitcase. That would have taken so long. So what both Charlie and I did was we would cluster together big groups of clothes, like all the jackets or all the knitwear, on the hangers and tie an elastic band around the hanger and then put that whole clump of clothing in a bin bag and it feels really unceremonious putting your clothes in a bin mm. bag but actually that was the best way to do it wasn't it guess where most of my blazers still are in a bin bag because my dressing room is only recently completed and i've just not had the time i'm thinking this afternoon actually because it's raining a lot yeah i just need to get it done but you yeah it, you did a lot of it for me and it I did. you did and um yeah it, it's the most eff efficient way isn't it yeah and then anything big and bulky like coats or big jumpers i use that as padding for heavy boxes so another of my tips that's a nice segue is that don't be tempted to put loads of heavy stuff in big boxes heavy stuff should go in small boxes otherwise you're just not going to be able to lift it up so what i would do is start with a small box put the really heavy bulky stuff at the bottom and then fill the rest of the box it up with something bulky for example a cushion or a teddy coat or a, or a bit of knitwear like exactly because then you're distributing the weight out and definitely don't put things like books in big boxes or plant pots or anything heavy because you'll just never be able to move them i would say books is an interesting one mm -hmm. not to go into too much detail but i would hazard a guess that most people cling on to books and 80% of the books they have they don't really need. Yeah. So rehome the books and then look at investing in new books when you when you move out. So I think but, I mean yeah. you've got cookbooks obviously but there's a lot of novels and things that we had mm -hmm. that we were like, look, let's give them to friends and family. Yeah. Let them enjoy them. We gave a lot away. And then speaking of boxes, Charlie and I tried really hard not to buy any boxes from any deliveries. I think since, so we put the offer in in this house in January, ended up moving in April, but since we first came to view this house and we had our heart set on it, from that moment, we started to keep boxes. So whether it was from, um, I don't know, a food delivery, like a vegetable delivery, <laughs> So whether it was a box from a clothing order or some homeware, basically anything that was delivered to the house, we would keep the boxes so that we didn't have to buy any for the moving. And also something you can do is actually go to a local supermarket or local retailers, because I remember when I used to work at Reese, every Wednesday we used to have to collapse down so many different boxes and send them to recycling. So retailers and supermarkets will give you boxes. So try not to buy any. And what we would also do is we would save everything from like tissue paper. Anything. We had we had quite a lot saved. We had our loads, loft. Yeah. Our loft was fifty percent boxes. Yeah. And um, wrapping supplies. Yeah. Tissue we paper. Buy, did we? Oh, we bought. We probably bought. We bought like fragile tape and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think a little bit of bubble wrap. But as soon as the second you know you're moving house save everything, whether it's tape, boxes, envelopes. At the end, I was even cutting open envelopes, like padded ones, and using that between plates so that I didn't have to go out and buy additional bubble wrap. And ask your mum and your parents to save boxes for you. Yeah, ask Seriously. all your friends and family to save they're, boxes. Because they're a rip-off as well, not to mention the environmental impact, but they are a rip-off. Yeah. Just want to try to avoid buying as much as possible. So my next tip that I wrote down, and these were, I literally just had this page open and every time I thought, oh, that's handy, I just added something here. Something that's really important is to pack all of your essentials, things that you need, for example, for one week in one bag and put that bag in your car on move day. So that's everything from your deodorant, your toothbrush, your makeup, your pajamas, phone, charger. phone chargers, towels, um, and basic cooking things. Pretend you're going on a self-catering holiday for one week and you can only live out of one bag because otherwise, Imagine if you move in and you really want to go to bed, you can't find your pyjamas, you can't find your towel. So just by having all of your essentials... And it is an exhausting day. Like, emotionally exhausting. <laughs> Training. So by the time you get there, you really don't... I mean, we did quite well unpacking anything. Yeah. But you are knackered. 
So I think did we remember pretty much everything, didn't we? Yeah. Something silly like even a kettle. Yeah. Like j just put a or a water heater, as, the, <laughs> as our American friends like to call them. Uh, put put a kettle in 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 your car. Look how he looks at you. He knows when we're being filmed. He he's definitely such knows a poser. because as soon as we're being filmed, he's straight up there. He's like, I can't be left out. Look at the way his legs and he's legs just and feet ridiculous. are. Ridiculous. Another thing to remember to do is to label your boxes. This is not really for your good, it's actually for the moving guys. So we labelled each box and we colour coded them with different coloured tape depending on which floor of the house or which room it was going to go in. So the moving guys, and some of them to be honest didn't speak perfectly good English, but what we could do was say, okay, okay, anything with a red label goes in the kitchen, anything with a blue label goes in the master bedroom. And because otherwise, and I noticed towards Towards the end, a few of the boxes I'd forgotten to label. It was a little bit of a pain when you have all of these boxes and for every box they're coming up to you and saying, oh, where does this go? Where does this go? Mm. And you've got so many other things that you need to do. So label your boxes, colour code them. I actually had an A4 chart where it had like a red sticker, <laughs> kitchen, blue sticker, bedroom. They did a very good job though. They did. They yeah. did a very good job. And the funny thing was, all the large boxes were your dressing room and as soon as they figured that out, they were like, oh, because it was up all the stairs, isn't it? <laughs> it was so far. Yeah. I would say, though, that links back into what you were saying, that if you're, when you're doing the boxes, try and consider the weight, particularly based on the layout of your house. Yeah. Because obviously your kitchen is normally always going to be on the ground floor, so that's not such a problem. Mm -hmm. But if you've got rooms up top that you're planning on taking big things, distribute them between boxes. Yeah. So DVDs, books, things like that, definitely. When it comes to tape, something that I found really useful was, and this is a really small tip, but having rippable tape to do your boxes, to do your labelling. So I'll leave links down below the tape that I got from Amazon. It was just so much easier than having to find a pair of scissors and put something down, whereas if you can just really quickly rip your tape, it was so much easier. So that's just a really small tip. As well as your suitcase with your essentials, you might want to also pack in your car, not the moving van, a box of essentials, so washing up liquid, um, soap, toilet roll, things like that. Just think about what you're going to need in the first few days when, let's be honest, your new house is going to be full of boxes, a total mess, so having those essentials. Um, I think we packed like milk, pasta, Yeah, tea bags, soup, yeah, definitely pasta. Coffee. I mean, just any anything that you use day to day yeah. that you would struggle to live without. Yeah. Um, and I would, obviously, if you've got pets, you need to think about pet food, their organic Lily's Kitchen, Nothing picky like eaters. It can be really hard to know where to start when packing for your big move. So something that we did that we found really useful, obviously, first of all, purge. And then just, we started to collect things around the house that we knew we wanted to take with us, but that weren't essential to our everyday living. So things like books, knickknacks, anything that basically we could live without, so decorative stuff, that's where we started. And we started that maybe a month before we moved and then gradually you work up to the stuff that you can't live day to day. I've not got the list in front of me, but one thing that we did wrong was we did pack things slightly too early, didn't we? We knew we, the house was going to be ours, yeah. but we didn't have a completion date. And because of COVID, obviously things were a little bit more up in the air. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is don't, <clears throat> don't get carried away because we were living for about three weeks amongst boxes, which wasn't ideal. So yeah. there's a fine balance between packing and going too far. Yeah, and agree? if you don't have room for your boxes, then obviously you want to not be living in a house full of boxes, but any out of season clothes, extra jewelry, extra cosmetics, that stuff that you're not going to need can be packed away pretty yeah. soon. My next tip was that when you are at that stage when you're about to pack stuff up, that's a really good time to wash things. So when we were packing cushions and preparing like our sofa, we would take the covers off and we wash them all. And you don't want to have to do that all in your new house. So when we were putting cushion covers back on in the new house, everything was freshly washed. So I thought that was quite um, handy. So I think that's everything that I've written down. I'm sure there are other things that I mentioned as we went along. I will leave a playlist linked down below, which was my moving playlist. I know that um, I really like watching those videos back, actually. It was a very mm -hmm. emotional time. A few, a few practical ones from me. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we did, it depends how far you're moving. Yeah. Obviously, we moved two, three hours from where we were. Fill your car up the night before. Yes. Really basic and get a nice playlist. 
because you will know be listening to nice music when you arrive and be calm. And another silly thing that we didn't do because of COVID, but I've noticed a lot of people do, and I think even dating back to when my mum and dad used to move house, is if you can, ask your friends for help and it sort of is then reciprocated in the future. Mm -hmm. So ask your close friends, say, oh, would you mind coming and helping me move house? Because the, and say, look, in return, whenever you move house, we'll do the same. Because I think it makes it more enjoyable. Yes, it's a yeah. personal thing, but you know, removal companies are very expensive. Um, so unless you are moving really far, you can save quite a lot of money. I think especially once you move in, like the actual unboxing, if we had been allowed to, we definitely would have had friends and family over, like your dad and your brother helping to mm. put together furniture, changing light bulbs, that would have been really useful. Okay, so now we are going to do our Q&A. So I asked over on the Old House Instagram account for some questions this morning. I'm just going to pick these at random because there are far too many to do all of them. So someone, a nice way to start, is has asked, what are your plans for the drawing room? So that's the room that we're in now. Would you like to explain? I think it's been a weird one, hasn't it? Because this is probably, this is by far the most special room in the house. It's one of the many reasons we fell in love with the house, but we weren't quite sure what to do with it, were we? Mm. And I think it's, in a way it's nice, but it's also a bit of a strange one that we've, we're six months in, and this is the first day that we spent working in here, sat in here with the fire on. Mm. I think in truth it's just taken us a while to get to this room and, in, and get the right furniture. So we've got these new armchairs, mm -hmm. we've got the new fire grate from a reclamation yard, and then we're still yet to furnish the rest of the room, aren't we? Yeah. But in short, it's going to be a special room that we use. We're going to hopefully have Christmas dinner, lunch in here, mm -hmm. and I think whenever we have friends over and things like this, it will be a room that we have cocktails in, get a nice bar trolley. Yeah. Is that what you envisage? Yeah, we want this room to be really cosy, but still the most opulent room in the house. So we have actually found the perfect sofa from Sofas and Stuff, and we've got this gorgeous terracotta um, fabric, which I think will work so nicely. We now have an antique effect rug in here, which is massive. So we're going to have the sofa facing the fire, a footstool, like a massive low padded footstool in front of the sofa. These, we've got two of these armchairs that Charlie sat on, one is over there. They'll be able to come in and then we can just have everyone sat around all cosy by the fire. Um, we've definitely taken some inspo from Soho Farmhouse. They've got this amazing fireplace in the Great Barn with a low sofa facing it. That's where we got the idea of the yeah. furniture set up. Because I think that's, I think the challenge is with a large room like this, mm -hmm. you, I was getting carried away thinking, okay, how do we arrange the room for when we have lots of people over? Now, firstly, we're not going to be having lots of people over anytime soon. Secondly, I don't think you should design your house on that basis. You've mm -hmm. got to be able to use the room if it's just the two of you. So I think that's what we've come up with is hopefully the setup will work if it's two, four, six of us. Yeah. And then if we have more people, we can open the room up, bring other furniture in, mm -hmm. or open it completely up for drinks standing up. Do you think? That's the plan. But with the fire, I mean, it makes a huge difference, it's doesn't it? It's so cosy. This is interesting. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Um, someone has asked the, what has been the biggest unexpected cost? I mean, the biggest unexpected boring cost is something called repointing, which I wasn't... For, I've learned a lot of new words. We should do a whole video on new words you've learned in the last six months since you moved to the country. But repointing, in short, and I'm probably going to get people saying, no, that's not what it is, and it is, but basically all of our walls, exterior walls, are stone. I mean, we have got some brickwork, but predominantly the house is made of stone. And there is the sort of cement or in between each stone and they're huge and very thick but without that pointing water can actually still get in the house mm -hmm. through that thick wall so a lot of the house it, it, you know from a distance looked fine didn't it when you go closely and look a lot of the pointing was crumbling away mm -hmm. or needed filling and replacing so we had someone do that for about two weeks um, which was quite costly and just something we didn't consider. It's something that when you live in a newer house, it's just not a problem that you have. And having never lived in a house like this before, no. Charlie and I, like when we came to look around, obviously we were just, we just fell in love with the magic of the house. We didn't see, oh my goodness, that gutter is ancient, that's going to need replacing. No. We didn't think about, you know, all these potential problems. Do, do you know what? We did think about like the roof, obviously, but yeah. straight away we were fortunate because the owner had put on a new roof five years ago. So we were like, right, that's fine. And in a way, I think that 
made meant we didn't look closely at other things. It wouldn't have changed our decision. Yeah. But it is something to consider. The guttering is going to be quite costly because it's going to be led and, and done very traditionally. Traditionally, <laughs> in the and that's only one area. And I think also we've had our patio repointed as well. So that's probably the biggest, most boring cost. Yeah. I would say the probably the other cost is is just the amount of time it takes for to have rooms painted and decorated. Because we've got someone doing it at the moment who is phenomenal. However, the prep work is pretty much 80% of the job to get a good finish. Mm -hmm. And the prep takes a long time. Yeah. When we used to have a decorator in Clapham or wherever, we were never 100% happy with the end result. And, and in hindsight, it's because they never spent the time prepping the rooms. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something as well. Invest in your workmen, yeah. that's for sure. Well, I think, I think really we've been... We, it's, it's been proven that everyone we've had that's been recommended to us mm. has been brilliant. Everyone we've found ourselves, literally everyone, has been poor. It's as straightforward as that. So if you, especially if you're moving to a new area, mm. find local tradesmen or recommendations from neighbours or, yeah. or the previous owner, ideally. Mm. The next question is, what has been your biggest adjustment since leaving London? I think it's the the ease of having everything on your fingertips. Yeah. Like in London, um, Uber is on your phone instantly, Deliveroo instant, popping across the road to get your Skittles and your Milky Way stars I think, instantly. I think cooking, yeah, for me cooking, I love cooking, but I like it to be planned ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to plan a lot more ahead. We can walk to a butcher's and our village shop, but the opening hours are you know, it's more fun. during working hours. So when you finish a working day here, mm -hmm. if you haven't already got the food in the fridge, it's a 20 minute drive to the local, or 25 minute drive to the local supermarket. Yeah. And they're big supermarkets. In Clapham, we used to just walk in and walk around a small Sainsbury's. Yeah. Whereas here, it's a good hour and a half by the time you get there back and around the shop. It's just not having everything on your doorstep. Like even when I'm craving a pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks, our nearest Starbucks is a 35 minute drive away. So I'm obviously not gonna go and drive just to get a pumpkin latte, but things like that, you're so used to having them on your doorstep in London. And I was thinking when we were moving, I had to go to NatWest, the bank on the high street in Clapham so many times for every little thing, getting something signed, getting some money moved over. And if I was to be doing that from here, that would mm. be like a 40 minute trip just to go and get one thing signed. Whereas in Clapham, I'd be like, right, jacket on, tottle down the road, get it done. But I think, I think it's made us, like anything, a big change. It's made us appreciate what we had in terms of we were fortunate. I would say that food and pubs and restaurants around here are great, but you really need to know where you're going. Mm -hmm. And for example, we haven't yet discovered an amazing Chinese or an amazing Indian restaurant. There probably are those restaurants, but they're a bit further afield. Mm -hmm. And in London and probably other major cities, we are blessed to be able to go out and within 10 minutes find amazing food, right? Yeah. Did it feel quite daunting taking on such a big, old, but amazing house? Yes. <laughs> I think, do you know what? I felt like I didn't feel that daunted until we started walking around. So, so when we looked around the house, and I think everyone will agree with this, when you look around the house the first time, you're in awe, if you love it, you're in awe and you don't pick up on the small things. No house is going to be perfect or 100% to your taste. And so when we moved in and we decided we wanted to do a lot of painting, that was then daunting to me because then I realised that actually none of the rooms in the house, not one, was the colour we would ideally want it to be. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, gosh, this is going to A, take a long time and cost quite a lot. Yeah. For me, it's just not knowing how to do things. Like, everything in this house is not typical. So whether it's the walls not needing typical paint or the fireplaces, like, how on earth would we, having grown up in newer houses, know how to care for a 14th century flat fireplace? Like, there's just so much learning but, to do here. But then on the flip side, I would say that that sometimes you know that's the fun of it like we've in in truth there's been small challenges but there's been nothing that we haven't been able to like you know to get over get around mm. and it's just added to the excitement of this adventure really hasn't it mm. well it has you don't you know that's what we wanted a challenge didn't we we didn't want to move somewhere um, where there was nothing to be done true and i think i keep thinking this with a house this size anyway there's always going to be something 
But I do fear when there are no more immediate projects, because actually I think we'll miss them. Yeah, we? I agree. Have the running costs been more than you anticipated? No, no. Mm, in some ways, <clears> like <throat> the work that we're having done, yes. But that's not a running work. cost. No, it's not a running cost. Okay, things like we have to have someone help us with mowing the lawns. I would say, so the, the, So we don't have a gardener as such. We have someone that comes just two hours a week that also works at the chapel and he's fantastic. And then, but then we also obviously need someone to cut the lawns, which takes two to three hours. And then we also have someone that comes and cleans for se seven hours, which sounds excessive, <laughs> but we hoover and clean a lot or vacuum a lot, Yeah. but it's just such a big house with lots of cobwebs and old beams that need vacuuming. If we didn't have a cleaner, this house would just constantly be so... Well, we wouldn't get any work done. No. I'd get no work done because I'd be constantly cleaning. Yeah. And, but I would say on the flip side, things like electricity, things like water, mm -hmm. things like council tax, actually are what I've been pleasantly surprised by. Yeah. Have you? Yes, definitely. I mean, there's only two of us living here, remember? So I do think that when we have, hopefully have children one day, and when we have the house full more often, mm -hmm. when COVID is but a thing of the past, we might start to realise that it is more expensive. But then we've taken steps, like the stoves being installed is hopefully a step to not needing the underfloor heating on as much. Yeah. Someone has asked, what mistakes do you think you've made in the house and how would you redo them? I would, I would, I would say largely we, we we're happy with what we've done. We have bought, and I have bought, and you've definitely bought, a few things online that weren't necessary, like we got quite carried away in the early years, early years, early months with this whole idea of antique French furniture. Yes, French furniture is a mistake that we've made. Not in our bedroom. Not in our bedroom, like this chair lives in our bedroom and we love the French style furniture in the bedroom, but even when we're moving around, moving into the house, we purchased, there's three bits of furniture in this room which are French antique style and it's a style that I love, I love the look of, mm. but it does not suit this house. Like this no. is an old English house. Farmhouse. Far yeah, I mean, it's a farmhouse. I think, I think what you can forget in this house, because this room is so grand, isn't a grand house. It's not, you know, there wouldn't have been butlers and all this. It was a farmhouse, first and foremost. Mm. So we want to sort of replicate that to a point, don't we? We don't want too much opulence other than this room, I would suggest. Yeah. So even in we the want dining, to, we want to invest in good quality furniture, but it's got to be quite classic in style. I think so. But even with a slightly more modern twist, mm -hmm. like, I'm surprised at how my taste has changed already. Even with like the light fittings and stuff, we went a bit more modern. Um, I would say my, that links into moving house list. And I would say actually try and hold off on buying too much until you move in. Yes. Because we did buy things, and obviously if there's sales on, then do it. But try not to because you might be quite surprised when you move in about how you think different things work differently. Mm -hmm. you? Yeah, definitely. And actually that, that does link into normally when you buy a house, of yeah, a bit bigger house, often owners will try and flog you what's in the house. Rain it in a bit because I would say that 90%, and we didn't spend a fortune, but 90% of what we bought with the house, mm -hmm. we no longer want. Yeah. Not because it's not nice, but because it's not our taste and it doesn't work yeah. with the house. The next question is, how do you find unique places to buy um, to buy from, like your lights and your furniture? I think to begin with, Instagram, like for yeah. example, Pookie Lights, um, that we discovered on Instagram, Jim Lawrence, so, following so, other interior yeah. accounts on Instagram. I mean, Jim Lawrence, I came across online, and then I've since noticed a lot of interior accounts we follow have them. Pookie was actually actually through through someone we follow i'm sure victoria and alex. maybe victoria and alex or yeah. well, maybe it was jim lawrence through lydia and ali and pookie was the one i found online but whatever it is i would i spend a lot of time googling stuff george smith which is this furniture brand i, I that came from so farmhouse i asked the manager there, i was like where do you find all these unique bits of furniture because it, it feels so well made at the farmhouse mm. and um, and, and they email me back and you know and, and share this. So I would say don't be afraid to ask when you're in restaurants, hotels. You know, don't be afraid to ask. Say, where's this from? Mm -hmm. I would say that that is another great sort of inspiration to us is visiting, yeah. you know, hotels and restaurants that are of a similar um, style to our house. Mm -hmm. um, where did you discover Charmwood Stokes? So a farmhouse, but not 
that I've known that for a while because when we first stayed at So Fun, I was like, oh, I really like these stoves and remember the name. And then I researched them, realised that they were 100% British manufactured, or in the albeit in the Isle of Wight, family owned, mm -hmm. which I think are both two values that are really important to us. I think a lot of the furniture, like George Smith, this is 100% made in the UK. Um, so we did want to try and, particularly with COVID, support British businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a Boris here. Support British businesses. Um, he does a lot of this, doesn't he? Um, but um, but yeah. So but I, I think even do you know the one thing like there are still I, you you discover that there is a real gap in the market for certain things. Like there are a couple of good antique websites, but the price points are eye watering, mm -hmm. and I feel like there's got to be more out there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's often shops that aren't putting it online. Yeah. Um, but I'd say Instagram is probably your best bet. Do we have a highlight on the old house account of swipe ups to where we've bought stuff? We do. We yeah. need to be better at adding stuff to that. Mm. Um, the lamp behind you, is it Broughton? Where did you find out about that? So I found this company because actually I was searching for antique style brackets and what's called door furniture, which is like handles and things like this. Another word I've learned since we moved in. Door furniture and window furniture. Um, and they make a lot of that and then it turned out that they also had these and I thought they would work well in this room. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean the other thing that is brilliant if you're looking at an older house or an older interior style is reclamation yards. Mm -hmm. So Google your local ones, great way to spend a Saturday or a Sunday, that's where we got the fire grate, the uh, fire tools as well. Mm -hmm. Reclamation um, yards. I mean even, I mean Etsy was, Etsy's hit and miss. Hit and miss, actually. We've so only I had one hit, to be honest, haven't we, for yeah. Everything else has been a bit like rubbish. Someone has said, um, actually, we've had this question quite a lot. How did you find your house? Mm. Was it a particular estate agent? I'm guessing it wasn't on Ryan Move. I won't tell the full story. I think I have told it before, possibly in my vlog where I was talking about how we manifested our dream home in the Cotswolds. Um, but basically, it was on Instagram. So we, I had been looking at houses online, and obviously our phones and whatnot have cookies on us. Um, and so my Instagram algorithm was feeding me loads of houses. This house came up on my Instagram Explore page, and I clicked on it, thinking it was going to be one of those like inspo houses that is millions and millions of pounds that has been in a family of generations for years and is not for sale. But when I clicked on the picture, it actually was the estate agent picture and it was for sale. So it was on the Discover page? It was on the Discover page, yeah. Wow. It is quite fitting though whenever I tell people that because obviously we work in the industry, Instagram is one of the major tools as part of our jobs, so it is quite fitting. Yeah. And we're obviously constantly telling sort of older family relatives that don't really understand that ultimately Instagram is the new search engine. It's replacing mm -hmm. Google. It's the best place to find restaurants and food and houses, and houses. by the looks of it. We also have loads of questions um, about the chapel. Someone has said, um, oh, where's it gone? Hope this isn't rude, but do you have the rectory as well? I think she means the chapel. Um, no, so our house is the former rectory of a Catholic chapel, which our house is attached to. We, well, actually it's not. So in between our house and the chapel, there is like an undercroft area Actually, no, it's no, so, attached to the chapel. Yeah, so, so, so in, in short, it's very confusing because our house was never religious to start with. To start with, it was a farmhouse with loads of land that isn't all ours anymore that was serving this farmhouse. So a really traditional farmhouse, nothing grand. Then what happened was the Catholic Reformation happened, of, uh, sorry, the Reformation happened, where the Catholic Church, a lot of the Catholic churches became Christian churches, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Protestant Church of England churches. Um, because of Henry and won't go into detail on that. And the barn that was connected to our farmhouse became a private place of worship for local Catholics in our village and the community that weren't able to practice Catholicism openly because it was actually illegal, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened there. And then even more confusing than that, the family that was that turned it into the chapel, he became the first Catholic bishop after the Reformation, I think a lot of the bishops were either killed or, you know, for whatever reasons, he became the first bishop and then suddenly our house became very religious. And then at some point along the lines, they separated the house and the chapel in terms of property lines. And what we live in is 
the farmhouse connected to the chapel, but you wouldn't really know it was there. No, um, that was one thing that we were really concerned about. We were rightly concerned to start with because, you <laughs> Firstly, know... Firstly, the organ in the chapel used to be in a cathedral. So we were imagining our uh, relaxing Sunday afternoon and then suddenly... <laughs> bam, 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 yeah, bam. yeah. <laughs> I think, I think we've never heard it. We've been pleasantly surprised. We, we obviously, our only real neighbour is Father David, who actually lives in a house that's not connected to our house, obviously. Mm. And he is the most lovely person you'll ever meet. So we're blessed to have him. And the Catholic chapel, you can only really have about 20, 25 people in there at any point. Mm -hmm. The services are on a Saturday, sort of late morning. And truth be told, we've never noticed them going on. Um, we'd love to attend at some point. Someone has said, wow, six months has flown by. How long did it take for it to feel like home? I think I felt really at home straight away, like see, really quickly. See, we are quite, we were quite different because when, when, I look, when we looked around the house, I instantly loved it, instantly knew that it was the house for us and couldn't stop thinking about it. You were more overwhelmed by it. The first time that I came to view this house, I wasn't actually sure, but because there was just so, I mean, I loved the house, but there was so much of it, so much to see, so much to take in. And when we went for our meal, this is pre-COVID, um, to like talk about it afterwards, I was just really quiet. I was so mm. blown away. But that's what I mean. But then on the flip side, when we moved in, and, and then also you were a lot more emotional leaving our house in Clapham. I, I was sad, but it, for me, so it's, it felt like the next step in our lives. However, when we moved in, I feel like it took me a lot longer to feel at home. I think possibly because we didn't live in our bedroom to start with. Um, we had to stay in a room that wasn't our bedroom, so we didn't really have a bathroom, we didn't have like a base. Well, and the family room wasn't decorated, we didn't have our new sofa. And then even, even like clothes, I mean as I said, a lot of my clothes are still being sorted through and put in my dressing room now. Yeah. I think, but I think in reality it took a couple of months for us both to fully settle in. But then I would also say on the, to sort of counteract that, mm. we surprised ourselves at how quickly we settled in, in terms of we've, we've never really missed London. Yeah. Have we? Yeah. If we're truthful. What rooms do you still have to transform? Um, there's a loft bedroom that we haven't touched yet. The dining room, we still need to decorate. decorate. Um, we haven't really done much for the entrance hall. There's, there's a lot of projects. I would say those, I would say dining room decoration is probably next on the cards. The loft bedroom isn't going to be decorated, but it's more it's styled and sorted. Mm -hmm. But I would say, to be honest, after the next couple of weeks of final bits of decorating to our office, it will be next spring, March, and it will be garden projects, actually, mm. that will be the next. There's a lot of questions about next projects. Basically, after we've had the office decorated, and I'll be vlogging that, I think, next week with an update, we're going to take a break because we're going into Christmas. We've kind of come to the end of phase one, so there is going to be a little bit of a break after the office bedroom. Um, but then the next big project will be loft bedroom, just gradually picking up furniture and then we want to do some some things in the garden, don't we? Yeah, I would say that, so the loft bedroom isn't like a huge project because it is just furnishing it or tidying it and furnishing it. So that will hopefully be in time for Christmas and we'll be able to share stuff on that. Mm. But then I think next year, financially, obviously, we, we want to start saving up again um, because it has cost a lot to, to get to where we are. Um, but similarly, I think... The next focus will be garden projects, trees, potentially a summer house if we can if we can get our uh, saving. But um, but those are the next things I would say. Would you? Mm -hmm. And then I mean, long term, I do think probably we're going to want to de decorate the top floor in terms of like all the hallways and everything. Hallways, yeah. We've not yeah. really done much with the hallways. Uh, we'll do a bit of a speed round because in 10 minutes I have got to join a Zoom. Um, someone has asked about the house's history. I did do a whole vlog on the house's history so I'll leave that linked on the screen and down below. Um, how many rooms does the house have? I mean it's got, well, we have, we have eight bedrooms including what is to be the office mm -hmm. and what is your dressing room. We will eventually have five bedrooms including ours that are with beds. And then, I don't, I don't know, total rooms, quite a few. Will you be building a gym? Yes, that is a project, to be fair, we forget that that's an ongoing project. So we've got some stuff being built for it now, but the thing we're holding off on 
is the actual doors for the gym because it's a carport at the moment yes. because they're so expensive we can't quite afford that just yet yeah. so i think the gym is sort of going to be phase one finished by the end of the year phase two finished by next year Someone has said, do you worry about the dog's backs on the many stairs? Well, actually, this is a good tip for sausage dog owners. They like to be kept in smaller areas because sausage dogs like to patrol their area and they like to protect their area. So it stresses them out if they have too much space. So we actually keep the dogs in their bedroom slash the boot room, utility room, the kitchen and the family room. So they are they actually not just allowed a, up the stairs. Basically, we tried to keep them away from the other. This is the first time that we've had them in the drawing room where they've been allowed and they've never really gone upstairs and I think the key thing is as soon as you start taking them upstairs if you ever did that's when you might find they'll try and sneak up there yeah at the moment I don't think they're aware that there's any house up there <laughs> well, they Dick just think Dickens, is. Dickens has He's explored a few up. times but sneaky boy quite a few questions on ghosts or is it haunted or paranormal activity Thankfully not. No, no. And do, do you know one thing that I think, but one thing I think that we're fortunate and could be why is that really the outside of our house, all the stone is very old. Some of the beams are even older than the, the walls, right? But everything else internally, other than a bit of panelling and a bit of floor, is new but done to what it used to look like. Mm. So in a way, a lot of it is new build within. So I'm hoping that's why there's no ghosts. <laughs> and let's hope it stays that way. And so many questions about Christmas and our Christmas plans. This is going to be a super festive room. I think maybe a tree here. I actually bought See, I, a Christmas oh, do you tree. A tree here? I do because it's a really cozy corner. I was maybe over there. there. I, oh, I don't know actually. I think you're right. I think maybe here. I made a huge purchase this morning. I did not realise how expensive artificial trees are. I spent. I can't even tell no. you. I'm not even going to tell you how much it was. 12 foot artificial Christmas tree. It's fit. 12 foot, yeah. That's like two, six, mm, it might be a bit big. Have you measured? Yeah. And that's one other bit of advice is to always measure things. I think, how tall are you? Nearly six foot? 5'10". To be continued. Well, it will, fit, it will fit it by the stairs if it doesn't yeah. fit anywhere else. But, um, I, quick segue to the very start, invest in a couple of tape measures before you move out. Yes. Because they're extremely handy. Yes if they're used. Okay, we're gonna have to wrap up the video here because I have got a Zoom in a few minutes time. But darlings, thank you for watching. I hope we answered your question. If not, we'll definitely do another fireside chat. Charlie now needs to stoke the fire because it's yeah. getting a little bit and, and to be honest, if there are any other questions, particularly for those of you that aren't actually moving house, mm. just ping them over to Old House and I will do my best to respond. Charlie is the one you're talking to if you're DMing on Old House. Not always. Most, most of the time. Charlie has put a lot of time and effort into that account. So if you're not following, Old House Our Home is our home account. And we will have um, more vlogs with updates coming very soon. But darlings, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And we'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye.